Tongi, you're intimately familiar with Keynote 12, uh, of course, uh, being uh, the first author on the uh, manuscript. Um, tell us um, it, it very briefly what the uh, primary data points were. Yeah. So Keynote 12 was uh, an expansion cohort in head and neck cancer. Keynote 12 also had other cohorts and other diseases, but the head and neck cohort is obviously what we'll focus on. So it was 192 patients that were treated um, with two doses of uh, pembrolizumab. In the end, the largest group was dosed at 200 milligrams flat every three weeks, and that's actually the dose was that was approved. Um, you know, there's always some debate, but in the end, it's all about saturating the receptor, and 200 milligrams flat is likely the dose that we'll see across the board everywhere. And even for the other agents, flat dosing is actually becoming the standard. But getting back to Keynote 12, uh, we saw a response rate of about 18%, uh, 16 to 18%, de uh, depending on uh, which cohort you look at. But more importantly, some of those patients had prolonged benefits. So in addition to patients who had responses, and durable responses, you know, patients actually living far beyond uh, what we expect usually for metastatic disease, you know, we have now a number of patients who are out two years, have actually completed two years of treatment, and the median life expectancy is you know, probably six months on a population like this. So remarkable benefit. In addition to those patients with responses, we also see patients with prolonged stable disease. And that's likely why these agents have an effect on overall survival. So that's the first point. They are active. They are active in both HPV positive and in HPV negative. And those patients that do well do remarkably well. The other thing that was right away apparent is that these are quite tolerable agents. Most patients have very few or no side effects, you know, skin itching, uh, rash, uh, hypothyroidism, and generally these are agents that are very well tolerated. So if you have a patient who just comes off chemotherapy and they have hair loss and weight loss and not feeling well, when they go on an immunotherapy such as pembrolizumab or PD-1 inhibition, they oftentimes feel right away better uh, because they're no longer on chemotherapy. In addition, you know, these drugs actually seem to have really an impact on overall survival. We saw that on keynote, uh, sorry, on Checkmate 141, and that's likely why these agents are such a big advance because they're overall survival drugs. So, uh, in general, a very favorable toxicity profile. The one thing I would like to point out, so, is that there are severe side effects. They are rare. Uh, the one that I would like to mention is pneumonitis. Uh, it only occurs in about 1 to 2 percent of patients. However, you have to screen for that because it's a life-threatening uh, complication. Most patients do very well, but we have to be vigilant for these rare but potentially severe side effects. And they can be treated with uh, high-dose steroids, you know, 2 milligrams of solimedrol a day, uh, but you have to treat quickly. And right away, if somebody says, I'm short of breath or you know, I have a little bit of a cough, I like to scan them right away to look for that and screen for, for side effects. Absolutely. There, we're talking about single digit percent, low single digit percentage points of, of these toxicities occurring, especially the pneumonitis, but we have to be aware of it and, and, and be vigilant uh, about treating it. The other toxicity that I uh, pay attention to in, especially in head and neck cancer patients, is hypothyroidism, mm -hmm. which uh, does happen a little bit more, interestingly enough, in the head and neck cancer population than in other diseases where, where these agents have been tried. And so, but again, it's the idea of, of uh, looking for it so that you can manage it and, mm -hmm. and intervene. Um, uh, so I, I totally agree with you, Tongi. I think we're excited by the fact that there are responses and in some of those patients, those responses are incredibly durable. Um, the uh, the pembrolizumab data, of course, were uncontrolled, as as both uh, uh, you and uh, Victor um, discussed. We do have controlled data for a PD-1 uh, blocker in squamous cell carcinoma of the head and neck, and that's of course the Checkmate 141. Kevin, I know you were very involved in that trial. Tell us a little bit about what Checkpoint 141 was, um, what it means to us, and, and what, what it's going to be for the field. Yeah, I, think, um, it's, uh, it's, I think it's a very important trial, but of course I was involved in it, so I would say that, wouldn't I? <laughs> You're a little bit biased. <laughs> <laughs> so um, Checkmate 141 was a randomized phase three study in 361 patients with relapsed or metastatic squamous cell carcinoma of the head and neck. Um, Patients were eligible for entry if they had progressed on or within six months of prior platin therapy. So the group of patients who progressed shortly after chemo radiation were also eligible for this study. Um, patients were randomized um, in a two-to-one fashion between intravenous nivolumab given every two weeks at a dose of three milligrams per kilogram um, versus investigator choice chemotherapy. And that was either methotrexate um, docetaxel or cetuximab given on a weekly basis intravenously according to standard schedules. 
Um, the primary endpoint of the study was overall survival, but other secondary endpoints were analyzed. In terms of the overall survival, it met its primary endpoint, and indeed the Data Monitoring Committee closed the study early because it had crossed um, the statistically significant boundary predefined in the statistical analysis plan. Um, the survival benefit at overall survival at the median was 7.5 months versus 5.1 months. Um, at the landmark analysis at one year, 36% of patients receiving nivolumab remained alive compared with about 17% in investigator's choice. In addition, and I think this is a strength of the study, um, there was very detailed analysis of patient reported outcomes in that study using three well-validated questionnaires, uh, including the EORTC QLQC30 and the HNN35, which is a head and neck cancer-specific questionnaire, and in addition, a more generic questionnaire, the EQ5D. And what all three of those questionnaires showed sim systematically across almost all of the domains was that nivolumab was able to maintain patients' reported outcomes in terms of their quality of life, their functioning, and their symptom scores. And the patients treated with investigator choice chemotherapy had serious detriment in those scores as measured at 9 and 15 weeks, indicating deterioration in both function and in terms of symptoms. So not only do we have clear evidence that these drugs can work in terms of improving survival and delivering meaningful responses, but they do so with fewer episodes of, of treatment-related toxicity and also disease-associated morbidity. And I think that really represents a significant body of evidence in this field.